Something interesting is happening with physical media. Now, for a long time in the 2000s, DVDs were a major, major source of revenue for studios. If movies didn't perform theatrically, they almost always made back at least some degree of money on their films because DVDs would sell like hotcakes, and even if they didn't, stores like Blockbuster would buy huge, huge inventories of discs to sell out to their customers or to rent out to their customers, and the studio would eventually make back quite a bit of money. But then the bottom dropped out of that market, sales hit a low, and well, if people started buying titles now, they started buying them digitally. Studios have been so reluctant to actually put out physical media that you get situations like what recently happened with Oppenheimer, where you had a 4K disc out that people actually wanted to buy, but the studio had a really hard time keeping up with the inventory. So what gives? I've written lots of articles and done lots of videos for Joblo Originals about the importance of physical media, mainly due to the fact that I find a lot of the movies that I grew up watching and loving simply aren't available anymore. If I want to watch something digitally, often I can't find it. And then I look to see if it's available on Blu-ray or DVD, and well, often it costs a lot of money to get an old DVD copy that I don't think is necessarily worth it. Or I can't find a legitimate Blu-ray copy. And 4K? Forget about it. You could find a pretty good selection of titles on 4K on iTunes and the various digital platforms, but finding them on disc can be really tricky. Recently, we did an article about how Tombstone celebrated its 30th anniversary recently. And yeah, sure, it's not necessarily the hardest movie to find. You can get a Blu-ray copy, there's lots of DVD copies of the movies, and in fact, it's relatively easy to find on streaming in a pretty good looking HD copy. But wouldn't Tombstone look amazing in 4K? Sadly, a lot of the studios just have no interest in putting out their catalog titles anymore. But there's a silver lining to all this. You see, little indie niche labels have come around and the studios have actually started licensing a lot of their big titles to them. So Arrow Video is a good example of this. One of their most anticipated titles that's coming up pretty soon is The Conan Chronicles, which features Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer in apparently beautiful 4K versions. In fact, I actually recently reached out for a review disc and they mentioned to me that their inventory was selling very fast, that they were having a hard time keeping up with demand, which to me is a very positive sign because it says that, hey, people really do like these releases. Sure, when you're buying something from Arrow or from another label like Shout Factory or Scream Factory or 88 Films or any of these really interesting companies, you are paying a little bit more because the fact is they have to pay a licensing fee to the studios. So the days of us getting these Blu-rays that would come out packed with extras that were $10 or $15 seems to be over. Instead, you're going to mostly see box sets that are going to cost a little bit more, but they're going to have gorgeous versions of the movies and they're going to have really thoughtful extras because the people that work for these companies, well, they're just fans of films. But it really is noteworthy that studios have all but abandoned physical media, at least as far as their library titles go. Some studios like Paramount still occasionally re-release classics through labels they have like Paramount Presents. And while you might get something like Saturday Night Fever or Footloose or even Flashdance out in a nice 4K edition, some of their biggest titles like Witness, which was a stone-cold classic and a huge hit when it came out, actually got licensed to Arrow Video for a really nice special edition, which I think is a great thing. But isn't it strange that Paramount wouldn't want to put out one of their kind of gems on disc? Same thing is happening with All Over Stone's JFK, which remains one of Warner Brothers' most popular catalog titles. But they seemingly had no interest in pressing this thing on a 4K disc. But their loss is Shout Factory's gain with that company releasing both the director's cut and theatrical versions in a very beautifully restored disc that is coming out later this month. But it's not just classics too though. One of Arrow's best-selling recent editions is Black Hat. This infamous Michael Mann flop grossed a princely $19 million worldwide, not just domestically, folks, but it's found new life via this release, with many saying that the director's cut contained as an extra is far better than the version we got in theaters. Looking at our recent stories here on Joe Blow, it's kind of interesting to see which stories have really taken off recently, because people are very interested in 4K releases of their favorite movies, especially if they were hard to find. One notable example is The Abyss, which apparently has actually gotten cancelled in the UK because James Cameron won't go and re-edit the film to cut out the scene where it looks like a rat is drowning in liquid. Now, if you've seen the, this movie, it's kind of an essential part of the film that you can't easily cut out. So, it's just not being released in the UK, which is kind of sad. 
but we did get it in North America and we're getting it on disc. Some of Cameron's actually releases in 4K have been kind of controversial with True Lies recently getting a kind of a facelift digitally that in still images looked really weird as if somebody had kind of painted a veil of AI over it, but I think it does play a lot better if you watch it actually in motion, streaming, especially on a platform like iTunes. But I digress. Some of the other interesting stories that we've put out though are about really niche titles like William Friedkin's Rampage, which was a very obscure film that he made in 1987 that never even got a theatrical release in North America. In fact, it was only ever released in the US in 1992, pretty much direct to video by Miramax, and they reshot the ending of the film because it was just too grim the way it was. Very strange. But all of this is kind of an interesting look into the future of physical media, isn't it? It seems increasingly like this might become more of a niche market for collectors, but a very healthy one. You see, movie fans are a lot like music fans. They're collectors, and if you give them a product that they feel is worth paying for, they'll happily do so. It's kind of like what's happening with vinyl these days, where you're getting these indie labels or, you know, these massive re-releases of vintage titles on these beautifully, beautifully pressed albums and platters, and they're selling like hotcakes. You're having things like Record Store Day, which I think may eventually happen for, you know, physical media or Blu-rays. I don't see DVDs or Blu-rays ever being as popular as they was back in the 2000s when people were buying them like hotcakes and they were generating millions and millions of dollars for the studios, regardless of what the titles are. But I do think that it's kind of a thing that's gonna grow over the next few years as people start turning away from digital and back to the old ways. Because as somebody like Christopher Nolan warned over and over again, when you buy a film digitally, really it's just a long-term rental. You don't actually own the film. Whereas physical media copy, this is yours. It's not going anywhere. As long as you hold on to it with your two hands, you're good to go. So it's interesting to see where physical media is going, but it's also kind of sad because a lot of the biggest titles, such as the James Bond series, feel like they're never going to come out on disc on 4K because it's almost too big of a project for an indie label like Arrow Video to take on without them having to charge like $1,000 for 25 movies. And I feel like MGM would never ever let this go. But, you know, the other interesting thing is that MGM now is owned by Amazon, which obviously he has more of an interest in streaming these titles and putting them out on the disc. So, kind of a weird time for physical media, but I do think, eventually, it's going to become a very strong market, just like vinyl has become. So, stay tuned, and let us know in the comments what your favorite recent physical media release is.